A stop loss is a vital risk management tool for many traders. But where should you place your stop loss? In this video, I will show you how to use the concept of maximum adverse excursion to optimize your stop loss placement. Maximum Adverse Excursion, or MAE, is the largest floating loss during a trade. It measures the furthest that prices moved against you. Let's say you enter a long trade at $100 and a market progresses as shown. Your MAE in this case would be $20, the difference between the entry price and the lowest market price during the trade. If you never experience a floating loss during a trade, your MAE will be zero. For illustration, I will use a simple Bollinger Bands reversal strategy for the pound yen. This strategy goes long when prices close above the 50 period upper Bollinger Band and reverses to a short position when prices close below the lower band. As you might expect, performance is not great. Since the strategy is always in the market, I decide to add a stop loss to limit exposure. Let's use the MAE to decide on stop placement. First, you will need to plot your individual trade distribution from the backtest. MT4's Strategy Tester doesn't calculate MAE, but you can use StrategyQuant to run the backtest instead. For each trade, there are two metrics I need, the closed profit or loss and the MAE. I like to use pips instead of dollar values because currency pip values fluctuate over time. With these two values, you can plot the following MAE chart using Excel. For every backtest trade, the chart displays the closed profit or loss in relation to the MAE during the trade. Green dots are winning trades, while red dots are losing trades. Notice that the vast majority of winning trades have low MAE values. Winning trades are usually profitable quickly, experiencing only small floating losses. Also notice the loss diagonal consisting of losing trades. These trades were exited close to their lowest equity point. Let's look at trades A and B. Although they are located in the same area, they progressed very differently. Trade A had a MAE of 580 pips and was eventually closed at a 580 pip loss. Trade B had a MAE of 600 pips but managed to recover, eventually closing with a 500 pip win. Let's now use this chart for stop loss placement. By analyzing the distribution of MAE in relation to the eventual profit or loss, you can estimate how much floating loss a trade can incur before it is unlikely to recover. You can place your stop loss at this MAE level because the risks associated with the trade are no longer justified. Below you can see the same MAE chart but with a hypothetical 200 pip stop loss. Adding a stop creates a vertical boundary at a particular MAE value. Once this value is hit, the trade is immediately closed at a loss. All trades to the right of this 200 pip stop loss will be shifted onto this line. This seems great because you'll be removing the big losses, but you will also sacrifice a portion of your winning trades. These winning trades experienced a MAE of 200 pips or more, but managed to recover to close in profit. An optimal stop loss thus removes the big losses without choking off too many trades that eventually became profitable. From the MAE chart, you can estimate that the ideal stop loss would be in the 50 to 150 pip range. As a first pass, I recommend placing your stop such that you retain 75 to 85% of your winning trades. I will demonstrate this using an 85% cutoff. Based on the backtest results, this 85% cutoff means that any trade that hits the stop level has only a 15% chance of recovery. The reversal strategy above contains 442 winning trades. This means I need a stop level that retains 376 winning trades. This corresponds to about a 100 pip stop loss. Here's how the MAE chart looks with a 100 pip stop. There is a concentration of losses at the 100 pip MAE value where the trades are taken out by the stop loss. For this case, many trades actually have a MAE of 101 pips because my backtest models a 1 pip slippage. In actual trading, during times of extreme volatility, stop loss slippage can increase dramatically. So with our new 100 pip stop loss, has the strategy improved? Let's add in the 100 pip stop and rerun the backtest. The equity curve looked much better, and profit factor and return over drawdown ratio have both increased. The average number of bars in trade has decreased from 94 to 68 because the strategy is no longer always in the market. And lastly, the number of trades has increased about 20%
because we are no longer stuck in losing trades for extended periods of time. So, in addition to traditional parameter optimization, you can also use maximum adverse excursion as a more visual method to optimize your stop loss placement. You can experiment with both methods, and if you get similar results, you can be confident that your strategy is conceptually sound. If this video brought value to you, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next one.